where I knelt to pray. And a voice inside kept asking me, do you think God is really listening to anything that you have to say? So I just kept wrong.
month. That's just in case you want to wear a warrant. If you go in and find a place that you can't go in, because you have to have one, so you might as well take one put it apart. And they're re reusable, you can rewash them and use them over and over again. So uh, that's that announcement. Any other announcements? Vicki Anderson, she's having some problems. I think her husband's got something. I believe she said LLC. Okay. But I think there's something that we can't do. Anyway, they need to request a problem. Yeah, I've got some more prayer requests. Eric, you want to make your announcement? Melvin Page, uh, keep Melvin in your prayers, Will Maddox, uh, Tommy Childs, and then uh, Tommy's sister, Nan, had a stroke. And uh, let's remember her, uh, Edna Cox, and then uh, Richard Eddy. Uh, he's in, as far as I understand, just went to sleep, and they've not been able to wake him up, and he's at, uh, in the hospital with a coma. Also need to remember the Jerry Curley family. Uh, Jerry uh, passed away suddenly this week, uh, so remember uh, him and his family. Uh, that's Emily Page's dad. Uh, that'll help. Who's married to Melvin's Page son? So uh, remember Emily and the family. I think they're receiving friends Monday night. I think that's what I saw. And Davis. At Davis. At Davis. Monday night. Five to Davis. eight. Yeah. Okay. Monday night at Davis. Anyone else? Brother David, please remember uh, Judy Redford and Missy. Their, her husband and Missy's father passed yesterday with a stroke.
Brother Steve, if you lead us in a prayer. Be sure to look at the plaque, the pretty plaque in the back. The church is gorgeous. The church is gorgeous, and they did an excellent job. <laughs>
this church is blessed with singing. I tell you what, every time someone has special music and they get up and sing, I, my heart is truly blessed. And lucky, it's not just the talent they have, but I, no doubt, the folks in this church that sing, they've got talent. No doubt about it. They can sing well. But it's the heart. Have you noticed how these folks sing from the heart? Man, what a blessing it is for us as a church to have so many folks willing to open their hearts up, willing to share their talents, willing to sing from the heart to God. And, and so as we gather this morning, no doubt we've already been led into worship with, with those who have sung, with those who have prepared the way for us now as we open God's Word for the sermon. And, and no doubt everybody's already been blessed. But I want us to look today at Galatians Turn with me, if you will, Galatians chapter 6. And as you're turning there, I want to share with you something that I learned way, way, way back when I went to college. I was in college in a class. I was taking psychology, and, and one of the classes I took had to do with uh, human behavior. And in this particular class, I learned about a study that was conducted, and this study went something like this. They had a room full of people. It was during the summer. A room full of people had gathered together, and one person was to go into the room. And no matter what was being said, no matter what was being done, their only job was to go in and say positive things. So guess what happened, Brother Steve? They, they came walking in, and, and uh, he started hearing some of the things that were being said. Some of it was, man, it sure is hot outside. And, man, I tell you what, we need some rain. And, man, I tell you what, we're, we're desperate for some rain and all these other things. And, and how the, uh, the, just everything seemed to be going negative. And his job was to turn and he said, man, isn't the summer great? And he had to say, man, isn't it great that it's not cold? Remember winter? Oh, how warm it is. I just love warm weather. And I, and my bones feel better when it's warm. And, and he just kept saying positive things. And it wasn't but about five minutes long before every person in that room had a positive statement to make about it being summer, about it being warm, about the sunshine. Now, everybody had a positive thing to say and just five minutes after this man walked in the room and was saying positive things. We, we learned those positive behaviors from other people. This guy then leaves the room and a lady walks in. And the lady comes in and all these people are saying good things when she walks in the room. And she's talking about, or they're talking about how great the summer is. They can't wait for the harvest to come in. They can't wait to eat tomatoes and corn and all these other things. And lo and behold, she comes in and says, yeah, but it sure is hot. And it took one minute to change the room. It took five minutes to convince people about the positive. It took one minute for this lady to walk in and change the talk and the language of every single person in the room. One minute being negative. I say that because it's important as we as Christians to remember who it is we serve and what it is the message that we share. You see, our message is a positive message. The world would love to twist it and make it negative. It is a positive message. The message is about freedom and liberty from sin. The message is about salvation in Jesus. The message is about a Savior who loves the world so much that he gave his life that people might be set free. That's the message that we carry. It's a positive message. But if you walk around a lot of places and you listen, you'll hear more negative than positive. You'll hear people talk about, well, the preaching went too long or too short, or the songs were too long or too short, or the, uh, the song director was too loud, or the deacons were, uh, were, were not doing what they needed to do, or, and, and it just seems like everything is negative in the things that we say. When God says what we ought to be about doing is sharing the positive, speaking the positive, doing that which God has already revealed to us, that love is greater than the sin in the world, and we can be victorious. And so in Galatians, we read in uh, chapter 6, we're going to read about what it means to have this positive attitude, what it means to, to be a, a Christian that walks around sharing the Christian faith. And if you would, would you stand with me as we look at Galatians chapter 6? We're going to begin reading with verse 7. The Bible says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. He that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. And let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. As we have therefore opportunity, 
Let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are the household of faith. I'm going to ask Brother Steve, would you lead us in prayer this morning? Father, we thank you again for the word. We ask you to I really love this time of year. Let me, one of the greatest things about this time of year is right now, corn's coming in, and you've got tomatoes getting on the vine, and, and when the weather works just right, even right now, during this time of season, you're picking those tomatoes, you're picking that corn, and man, it's just so good to have that fresh uh, vegetables coming in out of that garden. It's just a, a great time for people that love vegetables and, and, and corn and tomatoes and okra and all those things. And every year about this time, my mom will start cooking up all, all of those vegetables that come out. And, and my favorite probably is corn, but my second favorite, and I got to have it yesterday, was fried okra. Well, let me tell you something. If you don't know good fried okra, come to mama's house. Because mama could cook fried okra, right? We had that fried okra yesterday, and she set it on the table, and she made the mistake of putting it on the table first because when she turned around to go get up her stuff, it was like vultures. Me and Danny and uh, Aaron, and I mean, we just, boom! That whole bowl was empty, and nothing else is on the table. We've already filled up our plates, and we're eating okra before anything else is out there. I mean, everybody was wanting that okra, right? And mom looked, and she said, well, uh, do you want anything else for supper or just want okra? And Danny looked there and said, okra's fine. Don't make some more. We're good. Okra's fine. And, and so it, literally we were just enjoying that, that good, fresh okra fried just oh so perfect. And I began to sit there and, and immediately I thought about what we were talking about this morning, about this sermon and, and the verses. And I thought to myself, you know, when it talks about you reap what you sow, I'm so glad Dad sowed okra. Because when I reaped okra, man, it was delicious, right? You know, for Christians, we need to be aware that what we sow, that we will reap. If we sow negative attitudes to the world, guess what? We're going to reap that negative right back. You say, what do you mean, Tim? Well, I say it like this. Have you ever found yourself being aggravated and, and all of a sudden you start talking and, and you share that aggravation and you find out you go about a week's work being aggravated the whole entire time and you look back and think, man, I should have been so thankful. God did all these things during this time and yet all I was doing was complaining the whole time. I, I have a saying now that when someone says, hey, how are you doing? I sit there and say, hey, I'm blessed. I'm I you know, I'm not going to complain. God's worthy of my praise. And, and I've really tried to change my attitude to, to say those things. But this past week, I found myself very negative about some things. I just thought, ah! You know, we had some things go on, some things that took place that took me away from other things that I wanted to do. And, and it just was frustrating. And I let that frustration pour over. And it robbed me, really? robbed me of the joy that God was trying to give me. You see, here's what I have found, and no doubt you have probably seen it in your life as well. The things that don't go right are not a mistake. The things that don't go right in your life, usually God's using those for a purpose. The things that don't go right in your life usually draw you to a place where God can reveal things to you if you open your eyes. And sure enough, this week, God drew me away and opened my eyes to some things simply because things didn't go the way I wanted them to go. You see, I wanted to go and mow the yard. I wanted to go and clean the house. I wanted to go, go and get things fixed up so over the weekend I could just relax on Saturday and have fun on Saturday, play ball with Harrison on Saturday and go running with Addie on Sunday, Saturday. And, and so those were the things I was thinking about. And yet God changed all that and forced me to mow on a Saturday. You go, Tim, really? You think God's that detailed? Oh, yeah. I think God's that detailed. Because my mower was broke. Roy, my mower broke when I tried to get it out yesterday. So I had to go do something. I had to go borrow Dad's lawnmower. All right? So sure enough, I go get this lawnmower on a Saturday. Didn't want to do it. I was aggravated about it. I wanted to mow earlier in the week. 
didn't get to do that. Now I'm mowing on Saturday. My lawnmower's broke. I've got to go get Dad's mower. I'm looking at all this in a negative way. I'm frustrated. I, I get angry. I, I end up hurting my toe, loading the lawnmower. It ran over my toe. I'm sitting there and just aggravated the whole time through. Finally got done mowing. And Dad, I take the mower back over, and Dad says, Hey, y'all need to come back over. Your mother is getting ready to fry okra. I just told you how much I liked okra, right? Do you realize that I haven't been at a meal with my family in almost six months? I look back to realize we didn't even really get to get together on Easter because people were in other directions. And that was the first time my brother Joe, my brother Danny, their families, my family, it's the first time that really in a long time we as a family got to sit down and eat together. And it happened because all of a sudden I had to borrow a mower from Dad to mow on a Saturday when I wanted to mow earlier in the week. And lo and behold, Mom made my favorite, well, one of my favorites, which was that fried okra. And I got to have that fellowship with family. And I began to remember these verses. And it dawned on me. Tim, you reaped anger and bitterness and frustration and all the other things that come with aggravation and all of that simply because you were looking through your own eyes at what was going on rather than giving God praise for all things. And yet God still blessed you in spite of all that and you ought to feel guilty and you ought to ask for forgiveness for feeling that way because you lost your joy that God was trying to give you all along. And I sat there and I thought, you know, if I'm doing that, no doubt probably everybody else is doing it, right? Don't, don't we all find ourselves doing that? And so I said, God, thank you for giving me this sermon because I believe every single person in this room probably has been where I was yesterday and then ultimately found themselves looking back at God, thank you so much for blessing me in spite of my ignorance, blessing me in spite of my attitude, blessing me in spite of my aggravation and and discouragement. God, I just want to thank you that you open my eyes to where I can see the blessing. And what I want you to do right now, even right now, as I'm speaking to you, I want you to look back at this past week and I want you to find at least one thing that you can look back on and say, you know what? God, I haven't given you thanks for that yet. God, thank you for blessing me. I'm going to share one with you that we've not mentioned this morning. I want to mention it today. Uh, Miss Tiffany, I appreciate your efforts and all that you've done this past week for handing out vacation Bible school bags and stuff. But folks, we had folks from our church, all different kinds of folks came out to help prepare the bags and help hand them out. And to every one of you that took the time and the effort, I want to give you thanks. Because I don't know of another church in this area that did anything like that. And I'm not trying to just brag on our church. I like to brag on all churches. But folks, that's something we can have a little bit of pride in and say, you know what? We did something that God had laid on someone's heart. We came together and we fulfilled that, that desire and, and that wish that God had placed in our hearts. And lo and behold, these kids that, that received these bags, these families that received them, no doubt were blessed. I, I remember walking up to a house yesterday, or Friday night, and I handed her a Bible and, and a bag, and then I realized that there was... I asked her a question of her others, and she said, yeah. And so I handed her a couple more bags, a couple more Bibles. And she sat there, and she, she just looked at me, and she was like, you know, I really appreciate this. You know, I've got a kid that's a teenager. I appreciate this. I've got a young child that's grown. I appreciate this. Just hearing the words, I appreciate this, meant that we could reach our goal of trying to reach somebody, right? The Bibles that were handed out, the 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 bags that were handed out, the ministry that was performed, the joy that we all received. Folks, that is something that we should give God uh, uh, a great praise and thanks for, right? We should be thankful for what God allowed us to do this past week. And I say that to bring me to my last point, which is found in verse 10. I want you to read it with me one more time. I love this verse. It says this, As we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Do you know that God's desire for us is that we take advantage of the opportunities to do good unto others? To do good. Miss Tiffany, I appreciate you doing that. Those who came out and helped 
hand those tree packs out and all those other things and the Bibles and everything. Man, I thank you for your time and for doing that. I appreciate you coming out and doing that. And, and I look back on that and I think to myself, what great joy our church experienced just watching and fellowshipping and witnessing and sharing and doing all those things. What great joy these folks received from just doing good unto others, doing good unto all men. My question today is this. Do you and I take advantage of opportunities? Like I said before, I don't believe mistakes happen like that. I believe God's in the designs and details. I believe just as God sort of called my mower to break and me to have to mow on a Saturday, I believe all those other things that happen in my life are done by, by God's great design to lead me, to take me to certain places and to do certain things. And he's opened up opportunities. And the thing I want to share with you is this. If I want to reap good things in my life, if I want to reap joy in my life, if I want to reap happiness in my life, if I want to reap those uh, things that God has prepared for me in my life, I've got to live a spiritual life. I've got to sow the seed of righteousness so that I might receive the, the reaping of righteousness, the fruit of righteousness. I had to attend a funeral yesterday morning. It was a, a memorial service. And as I was sitting there, they were speaking about this lady and all the things that, that she had dealt with and all the things that she had accomplished in her life. And even at a very young age, she had accomplished so much. And yet she, she had passed away and, of course, we're talking about all the different things in her life. Folks, I began to think, what do I once say at my funeral? Yeah, what, what, uh, lucky, what do I want people to say about me? I, you know, one of the things I don't want to hear is that he was a bald-headed preacher. You know, you don't want to hear that. You, you want to hear something positive, right? You don't want to hear, well, he ate a lot. He loved to eat. We know that. He, he, I don't want that. But you know what I do want to have said at my, at, at my funeral? That man was a godly man. That man lived a life that was a, an example to others. That man revealed God in his walk every single day. That man was faithful in his prayers and faithful in giving. That man was faithful in serving God with all of his life. That man was faithful to God. And do you know who I want to have to say that? I want God to say it. I want God to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. You know, I can put on an act for you all. I can I can do that and, and sort of hide the secret stuff and put on an act and all you'll see is the good. And we've seen people do that all throughout history, right? That, that people can put on the show and, and play the part. But oh, how important it is that rather than the folks in this congregation saying great things at my funeral, oh, praise be to God, I'm seeking His favor and His comments the day that I go home. I'm looking for His words that says, well done. Thou good and faithful servant. I'm looking for him to say, Tim, man, I'm so proud of you. That's who I want to have. Talk to me and share with me about how proud he is of the life that I live. Now don't get me wrong. I want others to see that. I want others to see Christ in me. I want others to know that Jesus is real in my life and that Jesus can change your life as well as he's changed mine. But oh, how important he is that I be pleasing to him. And the way that I do it, the way that you and the way that we all do it in this church is we reap what we sow, we sow the seeds of righteousness to receive the fruits of righteousness, that joy, that peace, that tranquility in our life. I'm going to ask you to stand this morning with heads bowed and with eyes closed. Ask Miss Jewel to come back to the piano. And as she comes, I'm just simply going to ask you this morning, if you're here and you're lost, do you realize that the seeds that you have currently sown are seeds of separation from God? When, when it's time to do the harvest, you will not be harvested by God. When the harvest is done, you'll be eternally separated from Him. You see, this morning, what you need to do is sow a seed of righteousness in your life by asking for forgiveness of sin and being saved today. So if you're here this morning and you're lost, I'm going to give you an opportunity in just a moment to come forward. Just grab me by the hand and say, Preacher, would you share with me how I can be saved? How can I have my sins forgiven? How can I sow that seed of righteousness and salvation? Christian, if you're here this morning and you
you've been like me and you've struggled with some of the things in your life and you've just had this sense of, of frustration or anxiety or whatever it is that might be in your life and you want to just let it go, oh, what a great day it is to just turn over to God and say, God, I'm serving all that I am. I want to sow that seed of righteousness today so that I might receive your joy, your peace in my life. Then God help me to take advantage of every opportunity to do good for others. Father, I pray this morning that you might have your way in this invitation. God, that we might lift you up and honor you through our obedience. For it's in your name we pray. With heads bowed and with eyes closed, dismissed you on the place. If God spoke to you this morning, would you know? Say, we're doing whatever it is that he tells you to do. Would you be obedient today?